computer. Hey guys, I'm here with Neil Patel, just hanging out and chatting. We're just talking a whole bunch about Bitcoin and uh, all weird, crazy things going on out there on the web. But uh, I wanted to catch him here just for a few minutes, just to chat about marketing and in general, you know, um, how people that don't have that much capital to contribute to say ads, to paid media, to, you know, hiring lots of celebrities to hold up signs, <laughs> who is Neil Patel, you know, people that are just ordinary grind, you know, you got a business and it's generating some money, maybe it's generating 10K a month, maybe you're generating 5K a month. Uh, these people are, you know, they're just, they need the growth, right? And it could be a SaaS business, or it could be like an email-based business where you got a, a course or something like that. Uh, but there's plenty of people out there that are just kind of like, they have the proof of concept going, like there's some revenue. And scaling is really hard. So like, and I'm sure you were at that spot, you know, a, a while ago. But um, what is like some of the, just give me some quick, tidbits on of advice for somebody like that who doesn't have the joys of funding doesn't have like three million dollars in the bank they just pour into whatever yeah. uh they just you know five ten k a month and they are it's it's still a lot stagnant. of money yeah 5k is pretty good five or 10k a month pretty good but i'm pretty good you, you can do it a, a lot less like yeah. you know it, it, it's funny we have a mutual friend brian dean which you know we were talking about that earlier before we started recording like he does quite well on YouTube. He just creates YouTube videos and you can get traction. It's hard to get YouTube visitors back to your website. The click rates are really low, but that's one channel that's untapped. You, everyone has an iPhone or an Android phone with a camera. You record, pop up some videos, use tools like Uber suggest, put in some keywords, you'll see what's popular and then boom, videos around them in your space, right? Like that's one way to get some quick traction that's not competitive. Again, it won't make a multi-million dollar company for you, but it's a good way to get traction. Um, another thing that I love doing is I go to BuzzSumo, I type in keywords in my space. It shows me all the articles that my competitors wrote that are popular, and then I'll just write better versions of it, and then hit up every single one of those people that share their article, because you can just take their URL, put it into Twitter search and it shows every single person that shared it and you just hit them up like, Hey, I noticed you shared this article by John called the 10 ways to double your search traffic. I wrote an article on 101 ways to double your search traffic. Do you want to check it out? And like, cheers. Hmm. That's it. And a lot of people be like, yeah. And then you send them the link and be like, feel free to share it. Like that gets a lot of traffic or anytime I link out to people in a blog post, like if I link out to you, I would just email you saying, Hey, I linked to you, you know, a huge fan of your work. Let me know what you think. If you like the post, feel free and share it. Like that's another way to get traffic. So you're trying to, okay. So you, you'll write an article, say 101 ways, which is like better than 90 or 80 or 50 ways. Right. And then yeah, but you don't want to go from 50 to a hundred. You want to go from like 10 to a hundred. So you okay. want to be like the yeah. ones that do well that are low and just go crazy and so extreme that no one else will copy you. Are you trying to rank that organically or are you just trying to get people to share it? Okay. Both, because social signals indirectly impact rankings right. and higher quality content tends to rank higher. Now, do you do a lot of research in order to, and I, I, I do some of this research, I work with like Brian Dean also, but also a lot of other people like Dave Shore and a lot of folks in the SEO community to figure out what topics I should write about because there's like, sometimes you'll, you'll see like USA Today, Fast Company, yeah. Ford, like everybody's ranking on that first page. You're like, there's no way I'm going to get to that first page and they'll take that, like take that spot. Is there? Yeah, there is. I rank yeah. on page one for SEO. I rank on page one for, okay. twice for online marketing. So Just like, someone's big doesn't mean you can't outdo them. It's work. It's hard. Don't get me wrong. But like, okay. You can outdo them. But Even if I, your I domain get, authority is way low, like way yeah, lower than them. You do it. Brand search is way lower than them. You can still, just the content itself and the social signals. It takes a long time, but yes, it's definitely doable. Okay. Like one thing I like doing is I go to SEMrush, I'll put in my competitor URLs, and it shows me their most popular pages. I then take those URLs and I put them into Ahrefs, which is a link tool. It shows you like how many people link to your competitors. Yeah. And I see which ones have the least links. 
because then I'm going to SEMrush to see the most popular ones. And then I go to Ahrefs to see which of the ones, most popular ones have the least amount of links. And now I have a list of really good popular articles. I get a ton of volume that aren't competitive. Okay, like, so they don't have that many links to them, right? Yeah, because a ton actually don't have links, but people don't realize that. But like if someone has, you know, 100,000 visitors to an article, but they have 1,000 links, I won't rewrite that one. But if I have another one that gets 10,000 visitors a month and it has 10 links, I'll rewrite that one. Okay, low amount of links and, high, you know, high visibility, high, traffic, high, high traffic. Yeah. I do something similar with Quora where I, I look at Quora and I filter Quora results based on which keywords uh, it's ranking for. Number one, in my domain inside uh, SCMrush. So say PR, I'll do core.com, everything it's ranking for. Then I'll put a filter within there for PR. It will show me everything it's ranking for page, page one, first three spots for PR related questions. Then that's a signal to me. Like if that core question is ranking number one, two or three for that PR term, then I can create a native piece of content on my blog to outrank that core question. Of course, core question is a, um, like a social media site type of result. And furthermore, I'll go and answer that question so that I'm the best answer and I'm pulling in the traffic on there. Um, but I, I like your approach to, um, to doing the, the kind of like the link analysis and seeing where people, most of, most of them are. Have you I banned from Core for a minute? You were, really? Yeah, I, I was really growing in popularity. I was getting like hundreds and thousands of views per month. I would take popular questions answers from my own blog paraphrase them and the link back and they didn't mind that and it drove all right traffic not as much as i wanted but i got banned because cora said i was plagiarizing for my oh own. you would paraphrase your own answers on cora on your own blog yeah and they said i plagiarized from my own blog and they're what? like that's great do you know that all the answers are being republished on like forbes and businesses i agree they let me back <laughs> in because they're like, you don't have a right to take content from the site. I'm like, the site is called neilpatel.com. My name is Neil Patel. I'm like, I own it. They're like, you plagiarize. I'm like, no, I didn't plagiarize. This is my own website. And eventually they let me back in. Wow, man. That's, I mean, it's republishing essentially. Yeah. Have, have you done stuff where you, you go to a person that's like, link, uh, got, has the most traffic for that keyword and being like, hey, can we license that content from you? I've seen that recently. Recently, somebody was telling me they're doing that, where it's like, pay somebody else to take that content, move it over to the 301 redirect. I was telling my co-founder, who doesn't have that popular of a blog, but he has a decent social following. I'm like, create a Medium account, just republish your best content on Medium. And he's like, dude, it gets way more traffic than I do on my own blog. I'm like, exactly. I'm like, just use Medium. So that's helped him, and that drives good volume. Um, the other thing that we do that works well is a lot of people have LinkedIn connections, like except everyone. And then I take my content and put the first few paragraphs on LinkedIn and then put a click to continue link to get the rest back to my site. And that drives a good amount of traffic. I think I'm almost at 30,000 visitors a month just from LinkedIn using that. You ha yeah. Once you have a network there and a following, I think it really makes sense. Uh, Gaetano from Sales Hacker does that a lot. He's a good friend of mine. We're hanging out here a lot. That's cool. So as a like a scrappy founder, I got like 5k coming in. Um, I can probably dedicate, you know, like one or two articles. I'll go to SEM rush. I'll look at my competitors, what they're ranking for. Then Ahrefs, I look at which ones have the least amount of links. Yep. And then I'm basically trying to rewrite that article and uh, gain those links. Now I'm going to, not only hit up people who have shared those articles, but I'm also going to go try and get people who have linked to them to link to mine. Probably is that what you typically would do? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, outside of that, is there anything else that comes to mind where your you know like traffic and exposure? Because you know like these startups and businesses, they're looking for like I guess revenues and and sales, and so um, this is more of a I guess like longer term game with the SEO where you're, um, you're creating this content, you're writing it, you're publishing it. It takes a while to get, you know, like get the traffic up, get some of the, and some people are just impatient. And I see this a lot in my business. We have 
you know, 5,000 people paying for this, this service and they're trying to actively like get myself into Fast Company and Inc. And I, I need to get my traffic to like this much and I need this much. And they're so they're struggling, you know? Well, one is patience and two, a PR is great. Um, but a lot of people try to do PR, content, SEO, social media. Like there's not enough time in the day to do it all. Yeah. So pick the ones you're the best at. Uh, and then the other thing I do is with startups, a lot of them have development and product and design resources because they're better at that than marketing in most cases, right? Most cases, yes. <laughs> if I tell them create free tools. Free tools is one of the best ways to grow. HubSpot grew through their HubSpot greater, right? Yes. People put in a URL, they analyze, and then they sell you. Like these free tools, I kid you not, they're way more popular than content. And I've created a ton of them. And I have a team that just creates free tools for me. And on top of that, it's cheaper than doing content marketing. Oh, right, right. Yeah, free tools is great because, like, you end up kind of – I just reach out was free for a while. I mean, I started char – like, had, like, a free version for a long time, just getting people in and using it, and then started charging after a while. The um, – and you would just – I mean, my personal experience has been, like, create a tool, launch it on Reddit, product hunt, startup digest, get some people in there, and then try and upgrade them to the same version. And people that have uh, – Courses kind of a similar funnel for me. Like I would create a, a free course. I get people into that, get people excited about that, and then get to the to the paid version as well. Um, yep. Besides, um, so SEO, creating a a, a product. Um, talk tell, talk to me a little bit more about cold emailing as a tactic and um, using that for again a scrappy entrepreneur that doesn't have all the time in the day, but has an hour a day or 30 minutes a day, what should a typical strategy be for an entrepreneur that's like trying to drum up some interest, whether it's sales or any kind of exposure? The, the exposure ones are tough unless you're asking for a social show because that's easy. Links are a big ass. Most people won't do them. Right. I like doing cold emails for sales more sales. than anything else. Because what I'll do is I'll go find the CEO of companies and this works even if you don't have a name. I did this when I was younger and it worked then and it still works now. So let's say the CEO of Walmart is named John. I'm making it up, right? I don't know his name. So I would shoot a cold email to John. I'm like, hey, John, uh, I know you're busy, but can you do me a favor and forward this over to your CMO? Um, I was analyzing walmart.com and I noticed uh, some areas of the checkout flow that were causing inefficiency. And my guess is you can increase your online revenue by extra 12 to like 20%, whatever estimations you have, right? That's assuming, let's say you're offering a service or a product that can help with that. A lot of times the CEO will click the forward button. And then if you're John or if you're someone who runs marketing and you get that email from your CEO of a big company, what do you do? You follow up because you assume that the CEO knows this guy. Oh. And there's a much higher chance that they actually pay you and it closes into a contract. Wow. You, you can't just lie and say you can do X, Y, and Z. You have to make sure you can back it up, but that works so well. Well, that's great. Um, that reminds me of the breakthrough email. I think he came, I forget the guy's name. He's here in New York, I think. Um, but he came up with that, like, let's email the, the top guy and then some people underneath. But in your case, you don't even email the guys underneath. You don't need to. You just go right for the top. and, the, and you yeah, just But you have to know their pain points, right? So it's like if Walmart's getting crushed by Amazon, I'm like, John, I know you're busy, but I have some ways that you can compete more with Amazon. You're doing X, Y, and Z wrong. Can you just forward this over to your CMO or whoever's in charge of your website? And you're gonna, there's a good chance they forward it. You have to keep searching Google for their email. That's actually harder than creating the email. Oh, guessing their email. Well, we have. There's tools. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of tools. And just reach out. We have like this bulletproof way of, um, so like uh, we have all the crazy guessers, right? We got like the, all of them. And then if none of them really work, uh, what happens is it goes to our team that human verifies there's like, literally like a hundred people looking it up and like making sure they find like the personal one or whatever it may not be. And then that automatically gets resent. So within 24 hours usually gets to a person. So I never, 
I don't do that anymore. Like I just have my, my people just like, there's tons of people out there sitting there like, Oh, we got an alert. Something is like, they're like looking, yeah. looking. Uh, but yeah, it is kind of hard a lot for people that don't have that. Um, and just reach out is only for like journalists, really. It's not for sales, but a lot of people are looking into like, what is that contact info for that person? What is going on? <laughs> there's like, a lot of tools that help. And, but yeah, like, you know, if you send enough of those emails, you send a hundred, one to each fortune, 100 CEO, I bet you're going to get more than one or two responses. You know what I mean? What I like, so yeah. So like, say the pain point is really like bland, like nothing is crazy. Like that's happening right now with that industry. Like HR industry, for example, like it's so boring. Like it's, oh, is that, that's easy too. Yeah. So you're just like, you're like, like hey, let's say, let's say you're the head of HR and you're at Amazon, right? Yeah. And let's say her name is Susan. I'd be like, hey, Susan, I know you have over 11,672 job openings because that shit's public. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, you know, I know it's a struggle, but I actually have a way where you can get quite a few more candidates. And then I would outline a little bit of the strategy and entice them and be like, you know, let me know if you want to chat about how you can actually fulfill these job openings. Oh, finding them. What about the product? Say it's like a survey product. Say they're serving their employees about employee engagement. Or whatever. You're trying to sell them on that product. So, like I, I would be like, hey, Susan, um, I, I was interviewing and talking with like over 20 people or over like 106. I'll try to go run a survey first people at Amazon, I'm like, look how dissatisfied they are. And I'm like, this is just scratching the surface. I'm like, <laughs> you want to change this? Look how much time you spend recruiting these people. I'm like, let's talk. I'm like, I can actually go over a solution on not only how you can make them happier, but how you can catch this before they're unhappy. So then that way you don't have to keep replacing people. All right. So you're going right for the top there. Would you go to CEO of whatever I am not? Would you go straight for the HR first? You can go both in that case. Yeah. yeah. Because they're obviously using something, but maybe something that's not ideal for that kind of stuff. I usually try CEO first, and then if I don't get the forward, then I try the people lower. The CEO is probably the best. Yeah, um, because if he forwards an email to the department head, they have no choice but to listen. Like, if Jeff Bezos forwards you an email, you can't ignore it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you do, you're probably going to be in trouble. The question is just one. Right, right. No, it's legit. I mean... That's the best way. If you can get that email address and you can get the real one and get to that person. I've done it. You know, like I, Ashton Kutcher, like I got him, he forwarded it on to all the people underneath them. So I was like, it works really like sweet once, once you hit the right person. I don't even know what he does anymore. Uh, investment, really, just investing and um, kind of hangs it out, community, like. I don't know. He's friends with Tim Ferriss. He was in his latest book right now, in the Tribes book. Uh, but yeah, he does investing really, like here and there a little bit. Kind of like not that much. All right, I know we you gotta you gotta get going. The one last thing I wanted to ask: when you're ranking and you're like you gotta jump to like first first like maybe first spot, and you're like at number three, you're just hovering and hovering and hovering at number three, and you're like shit, like. I think I've done everything. Like I have as much of links as these guys do. I have as much like everything. What is your like secret sauce to like push yeah, over top? Two things I do. Number one is I go to Google search console and go look at all the keywords that I'm getting impressions for, but I'm not ranking for. I go rewrite the article and make it like three, four times more thorough and mix in all the keywords because Google's ranking thorough content better and higher than people who just have thin content. So like, if you go really extreme and you're super thorough, they value that and that really helps with rankings. The other thing I would do is start coming up with crazy title tag and meta description ideas that are like not clickbait, but close enough to it where it's like appealing and you're not duping people and test those out because if your click ratios go up and you have thorough content, your bounce rate will stay low, your user metric numbers will look good. And you'll get higher clicks than the positions above you, and eventually you'll start ranking them, outranking them over time, right? So it takes a while, but you'll slowly start climbing up to the number one spot. So thorough, being more thorough on those other articles. They get. really love thoroughness. Like if you have less links, less brand mentions, and all the metrics, but you're super thorough, 
your user metrics are usually much better and you'll notice that your rankings start climbing higher and higher. It just takes longer for them to climb versus if you had a ton of brand queries. Yeah, that's what we're doing now actually. And you're, you're doing guest posting too to backlink to it? I don't do guest posting anymore. I used to no. do guest posting years ago, but. You just I, accumulate links through like cold outreach or just, now you don't need to really, right? Yeah, I'm like, I don't do any. I'm like, I already have a following, right? Yeah, yeah. I have 900,000 Facebook fans. Just put something up and people come and they naturally link. Yeah, yeah. But then there, when you're just starting out, you're still, you know, going. I did tons of email outreach and guest posting and all that stuff. Guest posting is probably the best way to go. Cool. I know you're busy. So um, on a parting note, uh, Brian Dean is running. We're, uh, I'll probably help him out promote this thing. Uh, voice uh, study, voice ranking on like Google Home, uh, Alexa, like how do they rank results? It's like what are the ranking factors for that shit? You know, like, that's uh, cool. So it's pretty sweet. Yeah. Um, I'm going to meet with them, chat about it. We'll shoot it over to you. Um, you can take a look. It's pretty interesting. Like how that stuff works. It's still so that's new. Amazing. Google home. Um, and, um, I'll let you know when this stuff will be kind of live. I'll probably, you know, like work on some articles and stuff around it, but yeah. Um, and let's catch up. Yeah. Let's do, do something together or do more stuff. It'd be fun to uh, help you any way I can, you know, um, I'm happy to help anything, anything I can do, you know? Just like, yeah. I'll let you know next time in New York as well. Cool. Yeah. You're coming uh, next year sometime. Maybe I come multiple times here. I didn't know you live in New York. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. I think you're San Francisco based. I come to New York more than San Francisco. Oh, all right. I'm going to be, I'm speaking at a growth conference, growth marketing conference in San Francisco uh, next week. So I'll be there all week. And then, uh, and yeah, and then I'm, I'll be here. So hit me up when you're here. Uh, Brian is here for like at least a couple more months. So he's like, he's actually here filming videos. Like that's what he's doing. Like all those videos. Yeah. He had like a whole studio that he rents out and he's got like people that bring you like food and snacks and like there's like an ordeal to film these videos. Like it's a no joke kind of thing. And uh, yeah, we're geeking out on different failures. Filming for a new product? Huh? I'm assuming he's filming for one, a product that he's launching. Uh, no, these are videos that like, he, you've seen the SEO videos, like his study. Uh, it takes him that long to film them? Yeah, well, he types up the whole script and then he does it line by line. Like he'll, he'll put up the, uh, the script and then he'll just read the script line by line. They'll film it. They'll like, I didn't know that. he yeah. does a good job. They're amazing. And cool. they're also like, he's got that formula down where like he'll keep people watching that whole video. So he's got like, he'll introduce things and then he needs to keep people through the whole video. So it's amazing like, job. It is. amazing marketer. I know it's like crazy, you know, crazy. We were just catching up with him on, on that actually, like his specifics of filming and like he had a studio here in Brooklyn versus out there in New York and Manhattan. He was trying to decide who to go with. Um, I just shoot and like, I literally just go into the studio. Yeah. No script, nothing. I just, just go. I just. Wow. It. Well, you got, yeah. I mean, your audience is also much bigger too. He, I mean, he's growing really fast. I mean, he's, he's growing extremely fast. He'll, he'll do well. I, I, he has so much potential. He's like one of the best marketers I've seen. Yeah. yeah. Um, he hasn't done too much outside of English. You're doing a lot more like Spanish and um, um, Portuguese. I, I did a lot with pipe drive actually. Portuguese is still really easy to rank for. So yeah. For that. Um, How big is pipe drive now? Oh, wow. I mean, I've been, had, I've been doing like SEO marketing consulting for them for like a year and a half, two almost. Um, they've grown. They just closed, what, like eight or $10 million. The, they're mainly all in Estonia, though. I don't know. I reckon like, like 50, like 70 people. I don't know. Like, I'll have to double check because I've only worked with the New York team here. New York team here is like 25, 30 maybe. But then like, I bet you there's like at least 100 uh, 70 maybe in Estonia. I've never been to Estonia. <laughs> Seem to be doing well. Yeah, pipe drives. Yeah, they're doing really well. They and Sales Hacker, like those guys are pretty like tight with the whole like community here and do like the webinar thing. I know those guys really well. Sales Hacker, Matt. 
But the potential overseas is bigger than the U.S. We actually yeah. get more traffic overseas than we do in the U.S. Yeah. And so you just got to build the funnel, right? You got to build the funnel all the way from... We like, do everything. We actually build like a, we'll set an office there. We'll hire full-time people on the ground. Like we'll create like a business from scratch. It each region. And it's all to get email subscribers or followers so that you can sell your course or what's no, like in Sao Paulo, we have an agency. So we help like their like banks and oh. you know, like the E-Trades of, you know, Brazil or the banks or the Goldman Sachs of Brazil or their cell phone companies. Like we help them all with their marketing. Oh, okay. Okay. Like consulting, things like that. So we go for like large contracts, but they pay, like we have seven figure contracts in Brazil in their currency. So you have to divide it by 3.5, but it's still good money. Wow. That is pretty good. And you've gotten those the same way you told me that you hit up the CEO and you just go and say, Hey, we can help you out. You just, yeah. Like in Brazil, I think we have a team of already like 26, 27 people. Wow. Mainly doing consulting like this. Is yeah. consulting more than your course? Do you do more consulting than course? We stopped course. Uh, uh -huh. Earlier this year, only from the neopatel.com site, only consulting. Most of the revenue actually still comes from software more than anything else. But the consulting is growing fast and will eventually overtake um, software. But like, for example, in Brazil, just in 2017, they've probably, they've already 4x, they may 5x the size in less than 12 months. Wow. Just we, consulting alone. And we started the year with we were already doing six figures a month in revenue, right? So it's like, it grows fast. Wow. Yeah, I mean, yeah, services, you just keep adding people, I guess, and if you're good at cold email outreach. <laughs> yeah. Is it mainly like strategy or are you doing services too, like SEO? Services. Okay, straight up services. And let's see, Crazy Egg is the software you're talking about, Kiss Metrics. No longer part of. No Still part of. So I just work on Crazy Egg and Hello Bar, and that's pretty much it. And then consulting. I spend a lot of time on the consulting company. It's the fastest growing out of anything I've done. But I have a brand, right? I built it up for 16 years, and then you start doing consulting. Like, it's not that hard. Yeah, you just, I mean, you just, like, people already know who you are. It's like. Yeah, and I get paid to speak by, like, companies like Facebook and Toyota and stuff like that. So you go, you speak, not only do you get paid to speak, but then you get a ton of business at the same time. So it's like fishing with dynamite, right? Like, I got paid to speak at a conference in Brazil where every company did a minimum of 200 million reais a year. And everyone is either the CEO or CMO there, so which means 200 million reais is each company does a minimum of $57 million a year, roughly. So it's not hard to get business, right? And like, I'm speaking to all the decision makers. Right. Yeah, that would be sweet. I mean, if you had that consulting, I mean, how do you even manage everything that, like you got the consulting thing, you got the- well, um, I don't awesome. run anything. I just focus on traffic generation and leads. There's people and managers and operators who do everything else. Traffic gen and leads, okay. Yeah. So totally. Hold. I have like 150 plus people, right? Just in the States and then more international. I don't know how many international, but gotcha. large, that's the only reason. My expenses are high. Yeah, I was watching like uh, Bronson was sharing me, um, just show me like your screen share of your ads. And I was like, Jesus Christ, like <laughs> millions of dollars in Facebook ads or <laughs> whatever you're doing. I'm like, whoa. I mean, like, you know. I guess the guy at your, at your level has got to like run a lot of ads, but I'm like, it's a lot of ads. <laughs> it's a lot of ads. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. Well, I didn't know that you were, uh, you were like the consulting part was such a big uh, part of your business. That's, That's great. Yeah. We're German, uh, Italian, Spanish, uh, Portuguese for Brazil. And then now we're getting into Arabic. So, Oh, Qatar. Uh, Qatar, UAE, uh, Saudi, right? All those places. So, Why do you choose to have focus so much outside of the U.S.? Demand is higher for us outside the U.S. than it is in the U.S. Okay, less competition too. Less competition and they love Americans, so they pay a premium. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I speak Russian, but 
I just hate dealing with Russians. <laughs> <laughs> I've never entered Russia, but it's a good place. I want to get into this year, Japan, um, France, uh, and then maybe a few other reasons. I don't know which ones, but Japan and France for sure. The thing is, like, SEO is not that big there. Like, competition is not that high. So it's like... But forget things. SEO. So, like, the big moneymaker isn't SEO. It's managing paid ads. Okay. See, SEO is a hard pitch. Going to someone and being like, look, you spend $20 million a month on ads. Whether it's TV, radio, we can help you get more results from it. We just want a portion of the spend. We'll even do the first 30 days for free. And if you don't make more than our percentage, you don't pay us. But if you do, you have to sign a one-year deal where you pay our fees and assume we keep performing, you automatically renews. That's where the money is. All right. Trial for a month. Cut of, you're taking a cut of Google's $700 billion market cap, right? It's easier than doing SEO. Right. Managing Google AdWords, stuff like that. Yep. Just trying to make sure you get a cut of it. First 30 days, you get like a cut of the spend and then some kind of fee or something as you yeah. manage the whole thing. Exactly. That's cool, man. I don't know how you find the time to manage all that stuff. You shut off the course, I guess. That's one thing. But I run the software in the course and I'm like, whoa, I take on consulting. It's crazy. More people. People solve problems. But we'll solve. I got right. Cool, run, man. But all right. Hit me up uh, January, February, whenever you're in. And in town, hang out. Maybe Brian will still be around or Rami or somebody else. There's a lot of people here, you know. Yeah. Thanks, Take uh, thanks for taking the time. I'll let you know when all this stuff is live. All right. And yeah, say hello to Heaton. Will do. All right, man. See ya.